The following is a presentation of ESPN on ABC. Welcome everyone to the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas in the 110th edition of the Red River Rivalry. One of the great rivalries in all of college football, which dates back to 1900. It's been played here in Dallas since 1929 the state fairgrounds of Texas the midway point between the two campuses in Austin Texas and Norman Oklahoma the Oklahoma Sooners take the field they arrive with a record of four and oh and have moved up to number 10 in the country this week and welcome to Dallas. I'm Sean McDonough along with Chris Spielman, the College Football Hall of Famer, and we're joined down on the field by Todd McShay. I hope Todd can hear us in this deafening noise of the Cotton Bowl. Now, for Texas to have a chance today, they need a great front four pass rush. If not, this is a matchup that's not going to work out very well for the Longhorns. The receivers of Oklahoma going up against that Longhorn secondary. It is a Texas team that has really struggled on and off the field. On the field, they're one and four. Their worst start through five games since 1956. In fairness, they've played a very difficult schedule. The four teams they lost to are all in the top 25 this week. But regardless of that, Chris, it's a mess right now. Yeah, it is, and there's a lot of distractions. One, they're having player-only meetings. Player-only meetings accomplish nothing. You sit around and talk about what you should have done. The other thing you look at it, you have meetings about tweets. You have to have some responsibility. You have your upper underclassmen blaming upperclassmen, upperclassmen blaming lowerclassmen. There has to be one leader and one voice. There's only one man responsible for this program and to get it turned around, and that's Charlie Strong. The other thing, Sean, if things go bad, this team can't go into the tank. They got to fight their way through it and show that they're mentally tough. Charlie Strong and the Texas Longhorns, a team in desperate need of a huge win. A chance for that today in this great rivalry game. The kickoff from Dallas right after this. Third down and six. If you're Oklahoma, one thing you have to be aware of is discipline in your pass rush lanes because you know that if the Texas receivers are covered, even early on if they're covered, he does not have the patience to wait for them to come open. I believe he's told to tuck and run to try to get the first down with his legs. It was in the game for the completion. A couple of plays ago, he takes off running and has the first down at the 24. Good job by Jay Norvell. Again, attacking the edges. The defensive line for Oklahoma is going to all slant to the right. You see Stryker gets a little over aggressive when he's supposed to be the contained player turning down. And now, if you want big plays, you want to have your guys do this. Block downfield, do not hold, hands inside. Excellent execution, and Texas is playing with a little bit of confidence, which they haven't had previously. Important to score first as well. They're 0 and 10 under Charlie Strong, but they do not score first. Here's Johnson, the wide receiver. How about that fight? Touchdown! This is an excellent job of staying in bounds, but this is awful, awful by Oklahoma. We got two hand touch there, we got two hand touch there, and you score touchdowns. Last time I checked, you're allowed to tackle and put your shoulder pads on them instead of two hand touch. Awful. Marcus Johnson, the touchdown on a 24 yard run, the wide receiver out of League City, Texas. 77 yard drive, eight plays. A very rough week in Austin. Charlie Strong said a lot of the off-the-field issues were a little overblown, particularly the stuff about the underclassmen don't like the upperclassmen and that sort of thing. 
But it looked to us toward the end of last year, uh, last week, Chris, at TCU, that the fight went out of them. That's clearly not the case. It is a very spirited performance by Texas so far today. Extra point good from Nick Rose. Texas leads 7 to nothing. I love it, yeah, I love it when you get that beat. Boots on, stomp your feet. It's like you've been waiting on. Another high one. And after the fake, Hurd takes off running again. And goes down at the 22-yard line. Tackled by Hatari Bird. It's a 25-yard run for the Texas quarterback. Really impressive play calling early on from Joe Wickline, the offensive coordinator. A lot of misdirection. The early theme is trying to get the ball out of Hurd's hands to the playmakers. And that time, they fake the misdirection and give it to Hurd. I really think they're keeping Oklahoma right now, Chris, kind of yeah. on their heels. Huge play here. Texas trying to keep the momentum. Alex De La Torre in the game as a fullback. Design run for Swoops. He powers inside the 10 and goes down to the 7-yard line. Perhaps even the 5. They're going to mark him down back at the 7. A 7-yard run. And they're going to keep Swoops in the game. He's busy celebrating. The coaches ran down and said, pay attention. They want to get quickly back to the line. Reminiscent of what Oklahoma's done in recent years with Blake Bell, the bell dozer. Swoops. 244 pounder shot down inside the five yard line. Same play, run it again until they stop it. And right now, I'm seeing Texas offensive lineman driving sooner defensive lineman into the end zone. Jordan Thomas, Ahmad Thomas on the tackle for Oklahoma. They stick with it. Why not? Touchdown swoops. He was into the end zone before he lost the ball. Check to make sure he had possession all the way across. Close, closer than it looked live for sure. See? Looks like he's breaking the plane there. But we were here last year. Texas, for long stretches of the game as a big underdog, outplayed Oklahoma. After further review, ruling on the field is confirmed. That's good. And they've certainly outplayed Oklahoma in the first nine minutes plus here today. Effort. That's what's getting it done right now. They want it. They're tired of being beaten up. Nick Rose on for the extra point. And Texas leads 14 to nothing. Just 41 yards in seven plays after the fumble kickoff return. Tyrone swoops. Had the final three runs. Shades of a couple of years ago, 2013 Red River rivalry game. Well, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> Texas was both in the first half as they get a touchdown here. 14-3 lead. Todd McShay is with Bob Stoops of Oklahoma. Pass protection, a little bit of an issue in the first half. What do you do to get Baker Mayfield some more time? Yeah, we've got to get guys open. They've got to run. We've got to get better route running, and uh, he's got to get the ball out. Defensively, a couple, couple series early on you struggle, but you really seemed to, to make some adjustments and did a really good job. What, what do you have to continue to do on that side of the ball? Yeah, the uh, quarterback run game was a big issue early. We, we got it corrected to a point. Got to keep doing it. Okay, thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you very much, guys. John Saunders alongside of Mark May and Mac Brown. Mac, you've played in this game. Or rather, not played in the game. You've coached in this game. Oh, I got played. Is it <laughs> <laughs> I bet, especially a couple of years ago. Yeah, well, yeah. You won with a big victory in yes, that one. Yes. But as you watch this contest, you're not surprised at all that Texas has come out and played well. No, the Texas players have a tremendous amount of pride. Charlie didn't like last week. 
he talked to those guys. They've had those team meetings and stirred things up. This is usually a game that the underdog feels less pressure and goes and relaxes and plays. And, Mark, the other thing about Texas, if you think about it, they've played well at home three times. They've really stunk on the road twice. So this is the first time I see them growing up a little bit here. This is a team with a different attitude that we've seen before. This is a team that's not making the ridiculous mistakes on special teams. They're plus one in turnovers right now because of their special teams, and they're not making the mental mistakes on offense or defense. It's an entirely different football team this week compared to week past. Don't forget, they've saved some of those critical errors for <laughs> critical times in the game. So, uh, hopefully for Texas fans, they can hold on and play the way they have. 14-3 to at halftime is good news for them. Under a half minute to go in the third quarter. Texas trying to pull off a big upset. Deontay Foreman rumbling free. Deontay Foreman across midfield. Inside the 20, and Zach Sanchez knocks him out of bounds. A 241 yard pounds this man could run and it's all set up by outstanding blocking right there caving in the corner of Jordan Evans that missed tackles again nobody wrapping up and just diving to people's feet you see the big fella just ran out of gas as Sanchez came off the finish but outstanding job of execution by the offensive line of the Longhorns an 81 yard run by the sophomore from Texas City, Texas. And we, we noticed last week against TCU, well, there's no question Jonathan Gray is a senior, 5'10", 211 pounds, and runs hard. He's, he's their leader, and they want him on the field, really good in pass protection. But there's a big difference when Foreman gets the ball. He just, even at a 241 pounds, has a little bit more juice in his legs, and he's able to outrun defenders a little bit more. Well, I think as the season goes on, Sean, because he keeps, or Antod, that he, he keeps performing, you got to give him the football. I mean, he's a guy that will get stronger as the game goes. He's 240 pounds and let him pound on defenses. Well, I think you made the point. 241 pounds running away for much of that run from defensive backs until he did appear to run out of steam near the end. By far the longest play of the year for Texas. The previous long was a 69-yard pass play. The longest run prior to today was 45 yards. And it's going to end the third quarter. They started the clock again after the field. Charlie Strong says we don't need a signature win. We just need a win. But a win over their arch rival would do a world of good for Texas football. We welcome you back to the Red River rivalry from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, and Todd McShay. A glorious day in Dallas, Texas. And a surprise, perhaps, in the making. Texas limped in at 1-4. and four. Oklahoma 4-0, four and oh, but it's the Longhorns leading 17-10 as we go to the fourth quarter. Tyrone Swoops had come in, the backup quarterback. And Oklahoma has used a timeout. That's the second they had to take a timeout for Tyrone Swoops. You normally think that you have a defense plan. It's not a secret that Tyrone Swoops comes in to pound the football. Atari Bird apparently on the field when he should not have been. And Oklahoma uses a timeout. Be very costly down the road. Texas in the red zone after an 81-yard run by Deontay Foreman, the 11th longest run in Texas football history. The last time they used Swoop, Sean, three straight runs. Don't be surprised if they have a little play action off of that. Started last year in their near miss against Oklahoma. And he played well last year. We mentioned the statistical edge was major for the Longhorns. Swoops threw for a career-high 334 last year against Oklahoma. He certainly can throw it. Passed for two touchdowns. Ran for a touchdown with 50 yards. He comes off the field now. Gerard Hurd, the starter, back in. In Texas, with the lead by seven and poised to take a two-score lead, not in any hurry to snap the ball. 
Hurd after the fake. Gets to the corner and is out of bounds at the two yard line. Bob Stoops glad that Hatari Bird was on the field on that play because he saved the touchdown. Well, and you can see just the explosiveness of Hurd and great effort by Atari Bird of forcing him out at the two yard line. Outstanding effort. And that's personnel matchups. And here comes Swoops back into the ball game with Wildcat. And I'm telling you, if you have a play action pass off of this formation, now would be the time to run it. Although they've had great success running it. Swoops in. Alex Delatore, the fullback on his left hip. Here it is. Wide open, as you said, Chris Spielman. Touchdown, Caleb Blue. It's coming right and blue it's going to sneak out here act like he's blocking good sell and patience by swoops not panicking not hurrying to throw and delivering a very catchable ball to blue it it was dealer's choice he had one or two and that oklahoma had to sell out for the run nick rose for the extra point good hold by trey holtz swoops Give him a lot of credit. He lost his starting job, but he has remained a very important member of this Texas football program. Many of the fans in the Cotton Bowl on their feet. Another huge play for the Oklahoma offense. They marched down the field to make it a one touchdown game on their last drive, converting a third and 11 and a fourth and eight along the way. Now it's third and 14 from their own 34. How will Texas play it after Charlie Strong used a timeout? Baker Mayfield is 14 for 16 in the second half. Four man rush, but pressure in his face. And down he goes. Back inside the 20. Puna Ford, Nashawn Hughes, an enormous play for Texas. They're actually going to bring, drop one out late, Sean, to spy Baker Mayfield because Baker Mayfield converted two previous third downs with his feet. There's three guys coming, and you see again, Nashawn Hughes beats Zeus Orlando Brown outside. Brown pushes him out, and Baker Mayfield runs right out into the pressure line. Nation Hughes to get the sack. And now a flag for a false start. The sack was a 17 yard loss for Oklahoma. And the penalty will be five more. The 19 of the offense. It's a five yard penalty, and it's still fourth down. The four will come in and clean up, and that, that was with a, a three man pressure, but disguised very well. On fourth and 36. Luke Thomas instructing his teammates to get away from Austin Seibert's punt, which bounces out of bounds inside the 45 yard line. 32 yard punt. 3.33 to go, two timeouts for Oklahoma. As you would expect a run, Jonathan Gray inside the 30. Tackled from behind by Jordan Evans, and that puts them in the field goal range at the very least with a 15-yard run. Ben Norvell coaches wide receivers. Now, they're not catching a lot of passes, but they're winning this ball game by finishing downfield and doing it with discipline and not grabbing and holding on to jerseys. The thing is, Oklahoma knows that they're running the football and they can do nothing to stop them so far. On the ground, Hurd! First down and more! And down in bounds at the 15-yard line, and that might put it into the win column for Texas. Poise, control, making decisions. 
heard. Watch the patience in letting the block set up. And this is something that you cannot teach a little burst through the hole, Todd. Yeah, the speed to get outside and then the smarts to get down to keep this clock running. Really impressive from a freshman. And to protect the football and not take an unnecessary hit. 14-yard gain. You know, with all the problems on special teams in recent weeks, give them credit. They've been sound today. They didn't want to have the line up for a field goal and they get a 10-point game. Now they're going to try to run out the clock. Jonathan Gray. Tackled by Dominique Alexander. Charlie Strong says we've had so many close calls. Lost by Cal by a point when they missed an extra point with under a minute and a half to go. Tied with Oklahoma State in the last minute. A problem on a punt. Set up a short field for the Cowboys. They kicked the game-winning field goal in the final seconds. Can they finish with a minute 50 to go? Just get the sense that all their frustration has been let out today. And this is what he's been looking for all year. Gray again. Inside the 10. And the clock will run. Under a minute and a half to go. The Pacific Life game summary. Mayfield has put up big numbers in the second half. And heard 166 total yards. Most of that on the ground. He's rushed for 110 on 20 carries. Yeah, and I'm also going to add Vance Bedford in that defense, slowing down a powerful Oklahoma <laughs> offense, and especially the front seven of Texas has been outstanding today. Game summary brought to you by Pacific Life. Hurd, take the reverse. Hurd slides down with another first down. Inside the five-yard line. And now they can take a knee. What a remarkable turnaround for Texas. They lost 50 to 7. Down the road in Fort Worth at TCU last weekend. They're waiting to celebrate with Charlie Strong crowding around their coach. And there it is. They never trailed in this game. There's a very good man and a very good football coach who's celebrating the biggest win of his time in Texas. Chris understand what it means for Charlie Strong not only for them for Charlie and his staff but for them I mean they were down Sean I mean it, it was chaos and I, I, they deserve that I mean you can say you're overreacting but I don't think you're overreacting because they needed something good to happen now they can build on it and Oklahoma suffers its first loss of the season the fall to four and one they lost 50 to 7 last week, and all the stories in the aftermath were not just about how bad it was on the field, but the tweet at halftime. Players apparently not getting along, although Charlie Strong said that was a bunch of nonsense we thought during the week. Even Bebo, the mascot, was deathly ill and did not make the trip. But Charlie Strong said all along, I believe we have a good team. We have to stop hurting ourselves. They played a terrific football game today and win the Red River rivalry. 24 to 17. Here's Todd McShay. Coach, it's been a tough, tough start to the season, but you get a huge win today against your rival Oklahoma. How good does this one feel? I'm just so proud of our players. It's just how they came out and competed. And you look at it, Todd, it was just all week they hurt so much. They didn't have any pride in just the way they battled back. And, and, I, and I know this. I've been saying it. I just truly believe it. We have a good football team. We've lost some, and they look at last week. I don't have an answer for last week. Come back this week. Well, we've talked the last two weeks about how studying the tape, you guys are a better team than the record shows. What was the difference today? Well, it's just they just came together. You know, they hurt so much, and we just sat there and we, you know, we just talked about. It. And I said to him, you know, at some point, we just got to go, guys, and we just got to play up to our ability. 
Either either you're uh, you're sweating an awful lot or they got you with the Gatorade bath. I think they got me with the Gatorade bath. <laughs> Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. They said we have to stop hurting ourselves. No turnovers today. Only five penalties. Each team had five. He's been a part of some big wins in other spots. But I don't know if he's ever had a better feeling on a football field than that. Final score is Texas 24, Oklahoma 17. That's going to be it. Longhorn fans have been calling for a signature win for Charlie Strong. You have it. Texas will beat the 10th ranked Oklahoma Sooners this afternoon in Dallas. The final score, the Texas Longhorns 24, the Oklahoma Sooners 17. Maybe one of the most unlikely wins in this ballgame. Armani Foreman did a backflip. Welcome to Texas Game Day Final, powered by Chevy Silverado. Here's your host, Lowell Galindo. Gerard heard how sweet it is. How do you like me now? As Texas takes down in the most unlikely fashion, Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl, 24 to 17. Not many people gave this Texas team a chance, including some of us, maybe most of us on set right here. Vegas didn't like the chances. They were injured as well. But Charlie Strong said this team needs to find a way to make it right when things go wrong. How do we get it back? When he said that, he was specifically talking about in games. But that really sums up what Texas was able to do from last week to this. Coming off a humiliating loss against TCU to put it all together at the right time to take down OU 24-17. to VY, how do you like that scene, baby? Hey, Puna Ford was one of the plays of the game, really icing this one. Third and 14 with Oklahoma down by seven. They're trying to mount the comeback. And we saw leading up to that, Oklahoma started to get hot with a couple of third and long conversions, a fourth and long conversion. But your guy, Apuna Matata. Help seal this win for the Texas Longhorns. Welcome to a very cheerful Texas Game Day final presented by the Chevy Silverado. Lowell Galindo here with Ricky Williams, David Thomas, and Vince Young. That's why we do this job, if you can call it that, talking Texas football all day, to have opportunities to talk about a performance like this. And I am pleased to announce the curse of Marcel Darius is over. The curse that started in the national championship game in 09 with Darius knocking out Colt McCoy, part of the beginning of a nine-game losing streak against the AP Top 10. The longest such losing streak in program history is now over. And now that it is over, Ricky, what can this win mean for Charlie Strong and the future of this program? Well, I think the biggest thing is buy-in from the players. You know, when, when the coach gets up in front of you day in and day out and, and gives his spiel and there's no victory to support it, I think the players start to doubt it. And, and you know, watching the team celebrate with their coach, Charlie Strong, it, you get buy-in. And, and, and believing in what he, what he talks about, it, it, this is great. I think it's a, it's a huge win for Charlie. The biggest win of Easy. his time here Easy. At, at Texas. And... Let's hope that they can take this and, and, and build off of it. I mean, when you when you go and you beat a team like Oklahoma, a top 10 team, you have the confidence now to beat anyone on your schedule. And so now we can we can bring up the conversation of how many wins this Texas team is going to have. Listen to this. This is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this the excitement is just uh, that's what you have to build off of because clearly these guys haven't experienced games like this. So to feel that excitement after a win. And the support from the fan base, I mean, they, they have never felt this, this type of feeling before. So when you feel something like this, you want to feel it again over and over. And hopefully this could be, be the start of a, of a good run for this program. Let's just listen. Yeah, 
Awesome. I think Cedric Flowers just thanked everybody in the house right there. <laughs> and you see excitement, relief, when guys win football games. This seems special to me, David. Just this specific look of relief on the faces of this Texas team. Yeah, I mean, they felt so much pressure. Just let that one sink in just a little bit. And it's it's hard to imagine the turnaround, the fortunes of a program swing like this, sudden change, if you will, from one week to the next. Yeah. And now you get the golden hat. And our buddy Chris Hall on Twitter, he posted a picture of him wearing the golden hat from his playing days. He said it's one of the most awkward but best pictures of him. And he vowed to keep that on Twitter for the rest of the year if Texas wins this game. They did, so Chris Hall, you better keep up that Twitter profile pic. Look at Coach Strong there. Beautiful. We had a few the at, governor. Yeah. of the boom <laughs> fist pumps. That's a good call. There is Governor Abner. Nice. There's the hat. <laughs> that is a heavy trophy, too. <laughs> a good thing Charlie's jacked. <laughs> You gotta put this it is on. like a bonding experience. I mean, watching watching the players go into the crowd, really making that connection. Watching Charlie make this connection with all the Texas fans, and with look the at governor. The, look wow. at the AD. Put it on, baby. Our AD out there. You have Mike Perrin right behind him. Awesome. That's better than a Stetson <laughs> right there. <laughs> better than a Stetson. Charlie Strong with that golden hat. That's awesome. I'm just happy today. Eliminated eliminated the, uh, the distractions, and went and played football. And just to see that at the end of the game is what everybody wants for Texas. Uh, us, us sitting right here, the fans, everybody wants that for Coach Strong. That's what Texas football is all about. To see them excited like that, um, I mean, it makes me very happy inside just, just to see that. Cause knowing, knowing they had a rough week. And, uh, rough week? <laughs> well, I mean. Rough year. R rough year. It's, it's rough been a rough year, year but I think it's, but it really all it came to head. I this mean, right, yeah. it, It's Definitely. the first time we heard exactly. people actually questioning, questioning whether Charlie Strong exactly. should be the, the head coach, and that's that's a big deal. That's a big. That's a big deal. So Especially yeah, plan for Texas. That's it, huge. All the Twitter stuff, the national yeah. media chiming in. Um, it, a timely win. A timely win. I mean, it, for me, it was. It's really. It's been really great to watch. Today, watch the team come together, watch the young players have success, watch the seniors have success, and you can see they're starting to, to trust each other. Right. They're starting to and then nobody trust the process. Them, did nobody think Texas, Texas won win but Big Rick. <laughs> Crazy prediction. <laughs> so just to oh, see you, these guys. You get bonus points. Yes. Yeah, so forgot about that. Just to see the guys you. go out there and um, bring it all together and finish the game, and then on top of that, have the excitement behind it, have the fan support behind it. That is a wonderful feeling. It's great to see something like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes to show how this team responds when it feels it has a support. Even it, only half the stadium. And we didn't even fill all the, the, the Texas half of the stadium. Right. But th the excitement of, of playing at a neutral site, playing in front of fans that don't always get a chance to, yeah. to watch the horns. Uh, I mean, if, if the fans can show that type of support, bring that kind of intensity at home, because mm -hmm. it, it seems like this, this team, you know, when they're, all, when they're all on, the, on the spot and get a chance to, to show themselves, they did it last year, came up short. But, but this year, going to Dallas against OU and, and dominating the season. Dominating. Yeah. 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 Physically. Yeah. You look at this team with everything they went through to start the season, and then it kind of, like Ricky said, it all kind of came to a head. But you look at the job the coaching staff did, Vance Bedford putting together that great defensive game plan, Jay Norvell calling a great game on offense, and, and you look at the head coach. I mean, all of, the, all of them, their back was against the wall. Everybody was questioning, including us, what they were doing. Yep. And, and Charlie found a way to unite that team, get them to all play together, pull in the same direction. And, and the result was a huge upset over Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl and the Golden Hats coming home.